close your eyes and now picture a doorway and when you walk through that doorway you see a vast field to your left you see some craggy rocks and to your right you see a emerging forest straight ahead of you you see a creek that washes down the landscape cratering into the earth which way do you go um i'll go into the forest so in the forest you see some snakes you see some bushes do you choose to see a spider dangling down its web behind you and landing on your back like like do i choose to have eyes in the back of my head do you choose to turn around and see the spider so okay so i know the spider's there no do you uh, well maybe i guess you do so it's do you choose to go do you see it can i step out of the way of the spider can you I choose to do that. <laughs> All right, you step out of the way of the spider, but inadvertently, without looking, because you're so distracted about this decision, you step on a tiny ground squirrel. This tiny ground squirrel squeaks, squeaks again. Uh, I and I stop stepping on the squirrel. <laughs> okay, um, it, it's very relieved and it thanks you, <laughs> and it scurries off into the woods. Okay. Now do you choose to see the spider? <laughs> Is it coming at me again? <laughs> it never stopped coming at you. <laughs> okay, wait. In fact, the spider is now, because you've taken so long whether or not to choose to see the spider or not, it is on your back and it has bitten you and it has given you spider <laughs> powers. What do you choose to do with these spider powers? <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, just keep them to myself for now. And hide your identity like a true hero would. Remember that. Welcome to the Carriageway Podcast. <laughs> this has been your lesson of the day. <laughs> I am your co-host, Jacob. Um, I am your other co-host, Joe. And we are brothers here at Carriageway. Nowhere else are we brothers, only here. So, <laughs> without further ado, let's get into some podcasting. It's a weird one already. <laughs> so, we got some channel stuff to talk about. Channel stuff. So... Um, since last month, when we started this monthly, is there a word for that monthly? You know, there's annually, biannually. I think monthly is right. Okay, I guess we'll just have to use that pedestrian word of monthly. Um, <laughs> there's a new look for the channel, with new heads. I got a new head, look at me. Joe's got a new head, look at him. Yeah. Um, Joe, uh, tell us about how that new look came about. Oh, well, I was thinking about it for a while. Um, because I wasn't super happy with how the the heads had looked out the gate. Um, but it was just kind of a... It was always, I think, intended to be kind of placeholder E. Mm-hmm. Um, Not placeholder B, placeholder E. I mean, especially when we stopped uh, doing all the like little animation things. Um, you know, is that... And then I tried a couple times, and I just was never happy with the results. But this last batch uh, of heads, I think, has turned out all right. I mean, what do you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I was hesitant to change. I really was. Um, because, you know, it's just, you know, you just get used to seeing those old that old look. And I think I, you, it, it just... There was a lot of change going on already. You know, we got Lily, who, uh, if you've been following Tamriel Tuesdays, you saw a glimpse of. I can throw up her picture here again. Um, she's growing up a lot. But, you know, I was going, when we changed heads, it was just there was a lot of different things going on. You know, school was going to be starting up soon. And there was this kind of pushback from my from inside. And it's kind of like, who cares, bro? It's like a YouTube channel with 20 subscribers, dude. Um, but I think it was just, it, it still had been like eight months of, of seeing those heads and editing them in to all these videos. So it was sad to, to change, but I think it's ultimately been for the better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, now it's hard to go back and look at those old heads. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for liking them. Yeah. Uh, and you've been doing a hell of a job editing b- together. I think it, it looks very professional. Yeah, learning. I've learned a lot of lessons since editing that original intro with the heads rolling in, and um, 
you know, I mean, every intro since has just been something new learned. Like even the guest intro when Jess was on um, is sort of the base of what the new intro is, of how the heads slide in and how that all kind of worked in a uh, Adobe timeline. So, um, and I mean, now we're also doing themed heads. So uh, yeah. you've, everybody's seen Scarage Way with us as zombie heads. Uh, yeah. And um, in the near future, mm -hmm. I should think, or this is probably up on the channel by the time this goes up, uh, you'll see our our um, samurai heads. Yeah. For a carriage uh, way of the samurai. Yeah. Actually, that's a tease because this is going up on a Sunday and it'll be the Thursday after. So be excited for that. Oh, okay. So I got my timeline wrong. Yeah. I had, I, I just, when I was looking at a calendar before we started here, um, yeah. So there will be carriage way of the samurai heads. So there's a new intro and stuff. So that will be exciting. That will go up on Thursday to replace the play of the pages. Um, I like how you are more Lucy and Lachance <laughs> every day. Every day. You know, the, the black hood looks good on you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. I could do with a little less of the dark sacrament. <laughs> yeah. Um, the less sacrifices and and skeletons in my closet. The night mother. Um, I'm the night mother. <laughs> I'm just a ghost. <laughs> uh, so, I also want to address something for the channel. Because I've had to put in quite a few title cards in our Let's Play of, like, apologies, tech issue, come, tech glitch coming up, you know, capture glitch kind of stuff. And I, I'm, I think those will, some of those Suicons that had it really bad will go up soon. But even the Resident Evil 2 playthrough had a little bit and I had to cut around some of it is basically my computer's old, you know. Uh, it's not really that old, but for a computer, it's pretty old. Um, got it, probably it's like six, seven years old at this point, and it seems like every every week it gets a little bit slower, a little bit worse, and turns out you actually need a lot of RAM to do <laughs> proper game capture, and also running Adobe Audition, which is pretty uh, processor intensive, Okay. simultaneously doing both of those. Um, so basically... That's why it's been so hard, I think, to edit Tamriel Tuesdays is and the audio keeps going out of sync on our different stuff and I have to keep resyncing it manually. Um is just because freaking audition, dude. Um and the computer and it's being so slow. <laughs> um so but I did look online and there's a couple things that we're gonna do to address that. So hopefully you'll see improvement in the future. And we haven't recorded Way of the Samurai yet. But we're going to try record, uh, recording with some of these boxes unchecked. So hopefully it'll be a better quality. Okay. Yeah. Because, I, you know, I'm worried that, like, it's it's a whole bunch of work. I mean, it's already a bunch of work. And when everything's, you know, you know, caught on fire, mm -hmm. like, that's just extra work on your shoulders. And you're, you're a pretty busy guy now. Yeah. Busy man. Um, but then uh, also exciting stuff is we're going to be playing a PS4 game for the first time on the channel. Uh, go, but going to use a different computer setup when we record that, just so it we can record at a higher quality. Uh, going to use my main home computer for that uh, capture. And we're going to be playing Resident Evil 2 Remake, uh, as we mentioned on the Scarage Way playthrough. Um, and pretty excited about that. I think if it goes well, if the capture goes well, set up and everything, uh, we might end up playing some more PS4 games in the future. We're looking at you, Sekiro. <laughs> yeah. We're looking at um, you, Ghost of Tsushima. I don't know. Any other? <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, just anything we feel like playing. Because we're, we're sort of uh, beforehand kind of limited. Um, but, you know, branching out, trying new things. Um, yeah. So... That's it pretty much for channel updating stuff in the past month. I mean, and that's been been actually quite a bit. Um, you know, last podcast we had our old heads, you know, and I and we the new heads were designed even then, but uh 
I, I think that was an exciting change. And I mean, we got a, a, a small bump in views after that. Um, so we've been happy and we hope it keeps growing and we're working on uh, building our social media game. Check us out on Twitter at carriage underscore way. Uh, don't really tweet. Don't really do anything. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. But uh, we started a couple of years ago, uh, <laughs> kind of re bringing it back um, and going to try to get down and dirty with it and get crunkin. Get crunkin. Uh, because Joe's social media pro. Um, <laughs> so, yep. So personal projects, Joe. Oh, you know, it's, man, I've always got like half a dozen paintings uh, in the works. And then, um, you know, anytime those are done, they go up on Tumblr and Instagram and DeviantArt. You want to share it, speak it out, man? What's your Instagram? Can we just put it in the de- description? Yeah, I'll be in the description. You can check out your description below. But um, you're, it, it's, you can explain the name of your, uh, the, the backstory of your internet oh. handle. Oh, why I'm Biombu? Yeah, so let's spell it out for people. Okay, it's B Y O M B U. And I have no idea if that actually means anything. Um, I did have a website, uh, bionbu.com, and it's now after I let my website lapse, um, this Chinese business has claimed the uh, URL. So maybe bionbu means something in Chinese. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. But how Scary. I <laughs> how I came by it, you know, by it is that um, uh, I was had to take I was in. Uh, art major in college and I took a lot of art history classes and um, we were learning about these um, uh, Japanese screens the painted uh, screens that you see uh, you know you you can think of like popular media with like large painted screens and uh, those are called biobu um, but the professor had written on the board on the um had written Biom Boo with an M in there, Biom Boo. Um, and that's what I had written in my notebook. Uh, so I was, uh, when I was looking for when I'd started my website years later, I was just like, so what the hell was that name for the Japanese screens? And I looked in my notebook and found Biom Boo. And that's what I just called my website. Um, only later to find out that it's Biobu. <laughs> but I mean, the, the damage was already done. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think Biobu was already taken anyway. So the, and you know, you can always say that the M stands for like modern or mouse or mistake. <laughs> yeah. Mistake. <laughs> um, yeah. A mighty, mighty man. So check out Joe on Instagram at Biobu. Uh, and Tumblr. And Tumblr. Yeah. It's um, all them social medias, except not Beyond Boo at Twitter. That's not Joe. Um, and I mean, we're always, I mean, between the two of us, we're always uh, talking shop for our video game. Mm-hmm. I'm making little practical headway, but I mean, I think we're always sort of, uh, def- always in the back of my mind, like I'm always thinking of like the flavor like, you know, if we come across a piece of media or like a photograph or like a historical footnote, we're like sharing that constantly, uh, you know, mm-hmm. about, you know, things to add, what what, what is important in the vision. Yeah. And I think that's always solidifying uh, slowly, uh, but it's always there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, then... I'm uh, still every day uh, writing my book, Martha. Um, yeah, every day write at least a sentence. That's my my one job every day. And making good progress. Book two is coming along. Uh, finished book one last November, the draft one of book one. And uh, How many pages is that? Uh, or I mean, how many words? Words for book one came out to about like seventy thousand. That's a uh, that's a that's a sizable uh, chunk of um, prose. Yeah, and before and that's before revisions and adding. There's like quite a few stuff uh, sections I need to add, 
partly this is like a first time process for me, obviously. And it's not like I talk to many people who are also authors. So um, like it's hard for me to figure out like what the best way of like, okay, finally getting revisions down. And then at what point do you start sort of sharing it around or trying to get it published? I, I don't know that. So I sort of have just been avoiding that and just, well, I still had the voice jump straight into book two and have been uh, wrote about ele- uh, 12,000 words, I think now in book two. Um, and it's going well. I actually think book two is going better. I can see that I've become a better writer. Uh, you know, the, the descriptors are better. The heart is better. Um, the character is more defined. Dialogue, I think, is more natural. So it's going good. And I mean, and you know, when you go back to write your second draft of book one, I mean, you're taking, bringing all these lessons that you're learning. Yeah. Or like, you know, the improvements that you've made. Um, yeah. And it took about a year to do book one uh, to get it to that full length. I started, let's see, it was, I started on like a first of uh, September 1st of 2017. And I finished it in like November early November 2018 so like if each and there's gonna be four books in the series so if I take like four years to kind of write out the rough drafts of all of it so anybody who hasn't heard before on the podcast what is Martha it's Uh, Martha is Martha (laughs) Um, it's like it's a historical fiction yeah 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 Uh, so Martha is Joe and my third great grandmother her name is Martha Mainzer She's born in 1851 in Ohio. Uh, her dad uh, died when she was an infant, and her mother uh, remarried when Martha was six years old mm-hmm. to an old man, really old dude. Um, well, not, you know, like 50. But he, this 50-year-old guy had been married before his wife died, had like uh, seven or eight kids with her, the, the first wife. Mm-hmm. Um, but then old man Horace marries Martha's mom and they end up having like seven more kids together. And you, from your work on family genealogy, you know the, like the broad strokes of these, these people's lives, yeah. but you're filling it in with color. Like you're, yeah. um, so it's like, yeah, kind of trying to picture based on like my own relationships with fam, my family and things like, you know, what would Martha maybe what would her relationship have been like with her mother and with her stepfather and um and, and how it sort of all works together yeah uh, and yeah yeah using those key bullet points like martha you know like who she married okay then that needs to be a character and there are some made up fictional characters too oh. um that are just purely from like you know never existed like a guy named george it's possible that a guy named George she knew, but, you know. Because, like, you know, that isn't recorded in, like, fem- uh, family genealogies, yeah. you know, just, like, people you know, uh, for the most part. So, I mean, that just makes sense is that, you know, there would be lots of people that she knew that we yeah. have no idea. And um, kind of the the main, insp- like, the thing that I always have to go back to for her character is we have a postcard that she wrote to uh, her daughter, um, which it was a picture of her, a, uh, her dog and her grandson. And she wrote on um, the back of the picture or on the postcard with the picture on it that uh, the only one that looked good in the picture was the dog. <laughs> oh, so, I mean, you already kind of have an idea of who this uh, person is to write something like that's a that's a slam if I've ever heard one. Yeah. So. So um, you always keep in the back. Anytime she says something, you're thinking that's it needs to be somebody who would eventually say that yeah. to somebody else. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the inspiration, and it's going good. Oh, awesome! And then um, uh, let's see. I remembered something else about the channel. Oh, I wanted to briefly mention the voice tutorial that we did. Um, oh, because yeah. I got quite a few views for us. I hate that the camera is out of focus. In that first shot. In the first shot, it is out of focus, and I I hate it, but hey, listen to this, everybody. Now we know. Now we know, and we can, in the future, when we record something like that, 
get the camera in focus. Well, the screen is so small on that camera, like I didn't notice right yeah. away until it was blown up on a yeah. TV. Um, and by that that time, it's like you know I had to I had to take off. Yeah. Um, so I mean, we couldn't reshoot. Yeah, and um, you know it's fine. It's just where it's all learning. Um, did, it, here's the question: Did you get it? Did you? Did you get it? I was a, you know, I think we sound pretty different. But uh, <laughs> like, what? Who was it? Was it mom or dad who had watched it? It's like what? Both. What? I like showed it to both mom and dad. And they're like, uh, I don't know. You guys sound alike. It's like you don't get the. Do you get it? Do you get it? <laughs> you. I'm talking to you. Do you get it? Yeah. Go back and watch it. Do you get it? <laughs> yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Pay close attention. Okay, you can't see Jacob is pointing accusingly at the microphone. Yeah, Mikey, like, uh, like it's done something wrong. Um, yeah, I thought that went well, though. I thought that was kind of cute and funny. Um, I think we should do more of that kind of shit. Yeah, and and we already have another thing kind of like that planned. Uh, so be looking forward to that. Um, I was thinking like I'm just gonna put this. I've been thinking about it for a couple of days and just put this forward to you here what would you think about putting a, like a video of dogs of, of carriageway mm. mm-hmm. you know yeah good you know just sure cute cute Keep animal, all, animal video it, if it gets us those views baby <laughs> I'm all about those views yeah I mean we're not people gonna, love dog videos well, we don't have ads on our videos we're not making any money so <laughs> it's not I just yeah I mean just because I think it would be cute to cute to make a cute animal video. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, if you film it and direct it and produce it, you can do whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Joe, do you want to talk about media stuff? Oh, yeah. it's um, Media so, stuff is, of course, what we've been uh, watching, you know, playing, reading, doing. Yeah, just like, you know, what what has been occupying our time, uh, our free time, um, you know, lately. Uh, what have you been playing? I just finished up uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, mm. uh, and it was kind of a new thing for me. Uh, it's um, for those of you who don't know, and I imagine that's, that's a lot of you. Um, it's a uh, top-down, like, hardcore Western role-playing game, PC-style. And I've never, I've played Western role playing games before, but never one so obviously made for PC. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's a, it's, it's the console version of a, of a very hardcore PC game. And, uh, like I just, my interaction with that genre has been super limited, but people swore by this game and I just finished it. It's like, I'm, I like it a lot. Um, it's frustrating in a lot of ways because I'm just not familiar enough with how that genre plays. Uh, but like it was the music it was beautiful. Like I thought it had an interesting visual style. Um, the story and the writing and the voice acting, I think were all very on point. Uh, would recommend uh, if you had a lot of time and a lot of patience. Um, yeah, was, I think time well spent. Um, yeah, Which I, character did you play as? Uh, oh, because like there's a number of like already created characters. It's for those. It's 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 a game where there's all about options and choices. It's kind of like D and D. It's kind of like like playing D and D. Like just a ton of things to do, but there have like these pre-prescribed characters that you could could be your character, and you sort of RP as them, like as as this. Um, lizard man who was king but got deposed so then your mission is about like reclaiming your your crown Mm -hmm. uh or like that for instance or you could create your own create a character and sort of like kind of muddle your way through and find your own narrative and which is what i did and uh i mean because that's how i prefer to play uh role-playing games if i can you know it's that i am the Mm character like putting myself fully in there um and, you know, I, I thought that was rewarding. Um, How did it compare to, like, uh, Witcher 3? Um, okay, which would be the, like, high watermark for Western role-playing games. Yeah. Um, I think it's 
it's nowhere near the production because mm-hmm. I mean this is obviously much smaller budget. It's um, has a lot more writing, has a lot more moving pieces. Uh, I think I prefer Witcher just because um, that's a more intimate and personal story. Uh, yeah. And how you explore the world is so much more uh, immersive based on just it being like having a being a third person a uh, third person game with uh like action mechanics uh just made it more immersive and more personal which are what I come to for games mm-hmm. um but uh like I think I I think actually the closer comparison would be something like Dragon Age the Dragon Age games mm-hmm. um and I think I prefer Divinity to Dragon Age well that's good <laughs> Dragon Age <laughs> Dragon Age is not my favorite. <laughs> I, it was, it was, it, you know, it's competently made. Yeah, is you know, it's competently made. It it fills up time. It like it's there's it's uh it's good. Like Dragon Age is good. The, I think Divinity has more soul mm. and um, you know, more soul, and that comes through. So, what's on your uh, rec- or one to ten on a recommendation level? To well, I think I have to make some caveats because it is very frustrating to play. Um, just you know, and it's, it's also probably dependent on the person. So you got to think of, we got to think of like a good scale here. Like you know, a Khajiit walks into a bar, <laughs> okay, and this Khajiit has an axe. Um, dual wields axes. Do you recommend the <laughs> divinity to this dual wielding kaji? Um, with the dual wielding axes, uh, that's I don't know. They're probably so high on catnip and skooma <laughs> that I just I don't. I'm, no, I'm not sure. I want it's to talk. not a recommend. Okay, <laughs> you heard it here first. Okay, what what have you been playing? I've been playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, um, which you got as a Christmas present, and I borrowed. Stole borrowed in quotes he's doing air quotes um, <laughs> and uh let, well okay for, well first let me say this i i started with i started with playing kingdom come deliverance which was um yeah so then <laughs> so what is kingdom come deliverance kingdom and why come didn't you deliverance like it? is a kickstarter um uh open world western role playing game that's historical based and it's it's made in uh, Eastern Europe. Yeah, and for that take, tradition. And it takes oh, place as is Divinity Original Sin. Okay, a small Eastern Europe European studio. Uh, so Kingdom Come uh, was sort of like you know whispered about for a lot of years because it was just in development forever and it looked cool and it was going to be kind of like oh it's like Oblivion but without fantasy stuff because it's like. A, a historical base based in Bohemia in, in like the 1400s. In the 1400s, Bohemia and like hard. The, it was sold as like the hardcore history simulator. Yeah, where you are the son of a blacksmith, sort of thing. Uh, yeah, I mean it is kind of. Um, and I don't want to like be mean to it or discount it yet. I might go back to it and try to give it some another shot. But uh, basically, I thought okay. I know this is going to be janky. I know this is going to be low budge. I know it's going to be, a, you know, have all sorts of problems and glitches. But I thought, well, at least it's going to certainly have, like, a good story. And, like, playing this game, it's like, nah, dude, sorry. I'm sorry. It isn't a good story. <laughs> the characters are bland. The world is bland. <laughs> like, there's side quests. I, I, didn't, I don't think I played a side quest far enough to play side quest. But everything is bland, you know? And it's like, man. And it's like, there's cool stuff there. Like, there's like a bunch of, like, charisma stuff and, like, conversation things that you're supposed to be able to work through. But it's like, what does any of it mean if all of it's just boring? How many hours did you put in? Uh, I want to probably, like, five. Oh, okay. So, you know, that's that's a fair chunk of time. Yeah. Um, you know, but maybe it was just I was in the right mood, you know, maybe I, I left it on my hard drive, potentially we'll go back. Uh, but then I started playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And, and what is your good. history with that franchise? 
Uh, I watched Joe play a little bit of Assassin's Creed 1. Uh-huh. A little bit. I uh, played a lot of Assassin's Creed 2 to the point got the platinum. Got the, but that was... Yeah. I didn't exclusively get the platinum. Joe was actually the one that got the final feather... <laughs> And got the platinum. It's a that was a and this has been some time ago. This is a very storied franchise now. Yeah, yearly you know, franchise pretty much pre- since two thousand what seven. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I seven came out, but I think they took a year off immediately. From, oh, okay, but I mean more or less annual franchise. Um, so yeah, played two. Um, didn't really play the spin-offs of two. I played Revel like Assassin's Creed Two. Is it like Revelations is the third one where it's old man Ezio? Yeah. There are lots played of spin-offs. A bit of that. Um, um I skipped three, played four. Yeah. Uh played a lot of four, actually beat that one. Didn't get the platinum, but played a lot of it. Uh didn't play anything after that. And now it's Odyssey. So the last one I played was four. Yeah. So there's quite a yeah, I mean, it still feels a lot like Assassin's Creed, but there's quite a bit of difference in how it's structured um, with now, like, dialogue trees and things, uh, which I really enjoy. So, as I understand it, you know, the Assassin's Creed games had, like, a very strong formula for a long time. Um, and then they kind of had taken a year off and then come back as sort of um, using a lot of the same mechanics, but coming back as... Uh, Structurally, as an action role playing game, Witcher 3 style? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, that would be a fine comparison. Uh, yeah, it'd be, well, you know, like you get better equipment, you're changing armor, which changes your appearance. Um, there's stats and abilities to learn. And uh, there's, there's like, you know, an emphasis on sneaking, which is pretty cool. Um, you're, there's really not a lot of need to sneak because. It is pretty easy. I'm playing on normal. Um, it's something that annoys me is uh, like enemies, even if they're like one level above you, ridiculously hard. <laughs> uh, so, um, like the Assassin's Creed, the selling point is that it's kind of a, a virtual tourism simulator. Is that each each game takes place in a different part of the world, and it's those maps aren't like maybe completely accurate, but like it gives you a flavor of a place, mm-hmm. like the the first game took place in uh, in uh, Jerusalem, and the second game took place in Rome, mm-hmm. or in um, in in uh, southern Italy. Yeah, that you go to uh, uh, Rome and Florence, and uh, yeah. or not like necessarily southern Italy, but you know, yeah, um, uh, and then and Venice. Yeah, uh, and, and but like each game, it's like a, it's a different city or like it's a it's a different uh, landmass. Uh, and so, what is what makes this new one? Where where are you going? So we're in Greece. Uh, Greece, I forget the year. Circa five hundred BC. Yeah, probably. Uh, like I think I haven't met Socrates yet, but like Socrates is supposed to be in it. So about that era, Greece. I think like they mention like three hundred. <laughs> Like with oh the, the battle of marathon, yeah, um, or of marathon, yeah. So and like uh, so, kind of that's happened. Like the, there's still like people talk about the Greek gods, you know, people still worship Zeus and Poseidon and stuff. So I mean, it's during the Peloponnesian War between Greece and Sparta, yes, or is yeah, that already uh, it's it's between Athens and Sparta, whatever the Peloponnesian that, War. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's during that. And, like, you kind of have, like, a play in it like that. And, like, you can go and, like, try to sabotage Sparta or sabotage at Athens. Okay, cool. And do like, but I, I haven't really been messing with that. And fun fact, it rewrites our history depending on how Jacob plays. Well, okay. You also have to understand about Assassin's Creed is, like, there's... It isn't strictly, like, historical fiction. Like, there's a bunch of, like, stupid fantasy stuff in it, too. <laughs> like, there's, like, ancient astronauts and, like, alien artifacts and things that are, like, controlling people. And, I'm not like, saying it's aliens. Pretty much. But and, it's like, aliens. There's this... I mean, this is, like... Okay, so, like, Assassin's Creed lore is stupid, <laughs> where it's, like, there's, like, the two factions that absolutely hate each other. The, you have the through, Assassins, through all time. and you have the Templars, and they, they never get along, and the Assassins are the good guys, and the Templars are the bad guys, and they're all, like, fighting over this alien stuff. 
And um, every conflict throughout time, the the Templars and the Assassins come down on either side of the conflict. Like mm-hmm. there was a, an Assassin's Creed three takes place during the American Revolution, <laughs> and so like you have the you know both sides, and it's uh, the Assassins and Templars on both sides of the American Revolution. Like, <laughs> how dumb is that? Yeah. Like, and I didn't play that game, but that sounds and in, that and sounds it, pretty dumb. I mean, it was especially dumb in like Assassin's Creed four when you just let me be a pirate, man. But no. Pi- the pirates are the assassins. <laughs> every pirate, every famous pirate you've ever heard of is part of Black, the assassins. Blackbeard, he's an assassin. Yeah. Uh, what, whoever the kid. Captain what, Kid. Captain Kid. <laughs> uh, assassin. I can't even remember who the Templars are in for. Is it yeah. just like the government? I can. Um, but, but anyway, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, that's, none of that's really apparent yet. Uh, because it's like proto assassins. Anyway, I'm yeah. playing that a lot. I'm playing the I'm playing as Cassandra. I like that. There's two two characters that you can choose from. You can either play Cassandra or like Alexios, who's her brother. Okay. Um, playing Cassandra, she's cool. Pretty tough. Anyway, <laughs> I'm enjoying it actually. Cool, cool. Um, so what have you been watching, Joe? Oh shoot. Oh, uh, Chris and I have kind of rediscovered our love of Jeopardy for the last like month and a half. We just every, we get in like, you know, three or four episodes of Jeopardy, um, you know, every day. Are you good? Uh, I'm, I'm decent. Krista is amazing. Hmm. Like, you know, she's getting all these questions that the Jeopardy experts miss. You, like I, what's your profession? I'm a Jeopardy expert. That's is I, that their prof- is that their title? Jeopardy expert? No, I mean the 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 the, the people who are good at Jeopardy. It's like you know, oh. there's some I and Chris. How do you know that? And she's like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> she just like, I don't even know how I know that. She just retains a lot of information. She it's it's really impressive. Um, there are some obscure topics that um, I have an edge on. Uh, video games, video games, uh, certain sciency things. I'm, I, I do pretty well at, uh, but generally, if there's anything about pop culture, uh, it's I just can't compete. Uh, I get a, a fair number of the literary ones. So anytime like they're reading off the categories, I'm like watching, like yes, oh no, yes, ah, uh, yes, no. You know, it's as they as Alec Trebek is reading off the categories. I'm like. Is it going to be a good game for uh, me? Yes, no. And then it's, yeah. yeah. But it's still fun. It's still fun to watch. It's it's fun to learn things. Like, you know, I like that show. Like, Trebek has a cool voice, cool presence. Trebek. Trebek. Anal bum covers Trebek. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing your mother, Trebek. <laughs> um, Krista hadn't seen that. And it's like, I was really? talking to her about that. And she's like, what? So I pulled it up on YouTube. Wow. And she thought it was pretty funny. What would that be like, what, seeing that the first time? She thought it was pretty funny. Um, yeah, just lots of Jeopardy. Like, uh, have you been watching any TV? Yeah, uh, I watched uh, All of Mrs. Maisel, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Okay. Which is an Amazon Prime show, I think, exclusively, that is about uh, a woman in, the, in 1958... Uh, who is uh, grew up in sort of a wealthy Jewish family, mm-hmm. uh, and her husband is kind of a scumbag. It's like wishy washy. He's going to leave her. Uh, then she goes into stand up comedy, and it's sort of about her and um, her manager, who she finds, who's mm-hmm. this. You know, she the manager is actually uh, she's from Mad TV. She was the. <laughs> You know the the skit on Mad TV of the woman who's like, oh, who? you know, Is like it, it's like the she's supposed to be like a, a Asian woman. Oh, who uh, 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 Lois or Lewis? Yeah, or, uh, she plays Burns, or uh, who plays Lois? Yeah, from, uh, yeah. Family Guy. What's yeah. her name? Uh, yeah. yeah, she's super funny. Yeah, and she, she was on uh, played. Um, she was on Workaholics, right? I don't know. In that one episode where she was that 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 guy's wife. And she, was, they were into weird kinky stuff. Oh, um, maybe. Yeah, yeah. What what is her name? It's like it, her something, name isn't Lois. It's, something it's, it's like Bern, yeah, something Bern, Bern, something Steen at the end. Bernstein. Bernstein. <laughs> Bernstein Bears. 
Uh, Bernstein. Uh, yeah, anyway, it's not really... <laughs> she's in it. Not my reality. She's uh, it, she's a... Um, it's Bernstein, like it should be. <laughs> she's a, a, a big character in that, and, and it has Monk. Um, uh, what's his name? Damn it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I, like, I also know that he's from Wings. Uh, yeah. Uh... Uh, God damn. <laughs> Tony Shalhoub. Tony Shalhoub, baby. Okay. Okay, we got one. <laughs> Zero one. So Tony Shalhoub's in that. Anyway, it was actually really good. Really good. Um, oh, it also has uh, the guy who plays Chuck. I don't remember that guy's name. Uh, Zach- Zachary Levi. Zachary Levi. Remember, he was always on the Game Awards. And yeah, I, I knew I knew his face. He has a very, he's, he's Shazam. He has a very punchable face. <laughs> yeah, he's like one of those people I remember. It's like, oh, the guy with the punchable face. <laughs> it's him, Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, that was good. I watched, uh, finished up season four of Pull Dark. Ross Pull Dark. I think I've mentioned Pull Dark on the Carriageway podcast before. <laughs> Nothing really to say. <laughs> it's just sort of good. It's a British show, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's cheesy, kind of. I, I don't know if that's the right descriptor, but it's fun. I, I like Poldark a lot. It's like one of those shows where you know that whatever situation Poldark, the main character, gets himself into, he will get out of. He's kind of like a superhero. Okay. You know, it's like one of those like Justified or um, where it just like you just like to see how is Poldark going to get out of this one, you know? Yeah. Uh, watch. Started watching Punisher season two on Netflix. Similar situation. How is how is Frank gonna get out of this one? You know, uh, Punisher. I compare Punisher to um, to a soap opera because it's very much like one of those shows or like battle anime where like nothing, 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 nothing. Action, yes. You know, it just and like it all builds and that because it was so slow. For so long, you know, like when something finally happens, it feels all the better. Okay. And like in a soap opera, it's like, you know, it's, I just imagine a bunch of like older people, you know, maybe it's older women, maybe it's older men, I don't know, who are just watching and they're just waiting for the guy to take his shirt off, you know, and it's like, okay, yeah, they're talking, okay, backstabbing, whatever, but then it's like, yeah! <laughs> when the shirt comes off, you know, and it's like that's what it's like when the Punisher finally like pulls out a gun and just starts shooting everybody, you know. <laughs> or like Attack on Titan, same deal. It's like you know, just just endless like poorly animated stills in of like conversations of lore that doesn't matter, and then finally when like they start zipping around, cutting the back of like naked giants necks off, you know. <laughs> Uh, so Punisher, it's like a soap opera and Attack on Titan, pretty much. Um, also, been watching. This is a this is more of an obscure show. Okay, I never heard of it. Your dad recommended this. Uh, it is uh, called Lodge Forty Nine. Started okay. it. I'm only on episode three, but he he really wanted me to watch it. It's like the life I want. This is about. This is like okay. So let me set this up for you. So it's this guy. His name is Sean Dudley, but his nickname is unanimously Dud. Okay. And he it's not like, oh, people make fun of... He's like, I'm Dud. That's just his name. Okay. And But it's a fitting name because he's like kind of just like this... He's a Dud, you know? He's a beach bum. He is like has a bunch of debt. His dad died. His sister is also has a bunch of debt, but it's kind of like the straight man. He's got long hair. He's got this like kind of old car. He's just how old is this stuff. guy? He's like maybe early thirties. Okay. Um, and he he's basically just kind of scrounging around for money. He's out on the beach. He used to be a surfer, but a snake bit him, and the wound never healed, so he can never surf again. He's just trying to scrape can, by. Can that happen? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It's actually it's got like surreal elements. Okay. Like so That sounds pretty surreal. So, um he finds this like ring to a secret society. Like you know like Knights of Pythias or um like the Masons, that kind of stuff, but it's called okay. like Lodge 49. I forget what the actual things, but he ends up joining this secret society thing. 
Um, Wait, Pythias, like the Greek explorer? Uh, one of like just that's one of the secret societies, Knights of Pythias. Oh, okay, I was... probably okay. Uh, and he joins this thing, and it's like the only place he feels like he belongs is in this Lodge Forty Nine. But there's like this kind of drama of like London, and then like the old leader has like gone nuts, and there's like it is supposed to be like no, this is nothing's weird. This is just a place for people to like build community. But then there keeps being like weird, surreal things happening. Where it's like they find a mummy, you know, hidden in the wall. And, like, some woman sees, like, purple waves coming out of another person's head and stuff. Like, there's, like, weird stuff going on, but it's all so laid out as, like, just mundane. So they're they're playing it straight. Like, yeah. As you should in, like, it sounds like a kind of a magical realism sort of... Yeah, kind of. A little bit, yeah. It's not super overboard on, on magical realism. But. Well, with magical realism, like uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, it's like, you know, it goes, it goes, it goes, and then it just slides something in, like, with a straight straight yeah, face. Okay. It just it just it plugs in the magical stuff, just like it's part of every day. Yeah. And it's not most of the book. It just, like, plugs in weird shit every once in a while. Like, and, it's, and it just doesn't skip a beat. It just keeps going. Mm-hmm. Um, Cool. So so that's, that's, a, that's a lot of TV, man. Yeah. I watch a lot of shows. Uh, watch a lot of shows with dad and mom. So pretty much my two greatest friends. <laughs> uh, Anything yeah. else you want to talk about media-related stuff that you've been watching or reading or doing or oh, listening? Oh, shit. Like, um, yeah, I started trying to read, again, uh, Tristram Shandy. Um, for the past couple of years, I've been trying to catch up on my kind of required reading, um, you know, just the, the classics. And Tristram Shandy is one that I bounced off real hard. And it's a, it, it's a book from the 1700s. Uh, Nothing it, important happened back then. Well, no, it's just like the way it's written is nobody like the it's it's really archaic English. It's like I can read, you know, books from the you know 19th century you know, are pretty easy to read. You know, it's, Mm -hmm. you know, some of the language is different, but, like, it's pretty easy to tell exactly what everybody means. Um, Like, you know, you know, Jane Austen and Charlie Bronte and um, Bram Bram Stoker. And, you know, those are easy reads. Um, And, you know, Jules Verne and whatnot. But the, like, there's something about the 18th, 18th century I just it's almost incomprehensible. So like every line, I kind of have to translate in my head to move on. And it's just glacially slow. And, you know, for a book that even in his time was, people complained it was glacially slow. So, I mean, it's, it's extra, extra slow for me kind of having to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like, I know that people do read and enjoy Tristram Shandy today. I uh, just, um, it, you know, it's the same with, um, when I like, I bounced really hard off of Don Quixote. Uh, you know, same same principle. Just you know, the the, the prose are just t- too dense, and the the terminology is so obscure. Uh, I mean, maybe maybe this would defeat the purpose of reading it, but maybe I could have like a Cliff's Notes open in front of me. It's like, what the hell does any of this mean? And like, so I can stay caught up. But maybe that defeats that's the, the only p- way I ever read. That's maybe that's. Defeats the purpose of even reading it to begin with. Um, so I don't know, maybe read something different. Sometimes it does help if you know, like, if you do read, go like Spark Notes and like read the chapter overview first so you know what is going on first. So you don't need to then interpret that. Then it's like, so then when you're reading it for real, it's you're developing a deeper understanding and filling in those blanks of the summary. Um, so don't read like a summary of the book, read a summary of yeah. the chapter. And that's then, what I was, that's, you know, yeah. to I, catch I think me it up. helps because, you know, being in, in the teaching department, you know, going to get a teaching degree, that's a there's like a, yeah, me. Uh, there's an emphasis on deep reading instead of wide reading. So you're going to become a better uh, reader and understand a lot more. If you, instead of just trying to read a bunch of different stuff, if you do repeated readings of one thing, so you like, you find one thing and you read it like three times 
instead of going and finding three books and reading all in one time. Yeah. You become a more intellectual person if you do that. Yeah. Read one book three times. So basically I mean, it's, is the idea. You know, it's it's illuminating like going through, like getting out of my comfort zone with my reading. Um because before like hand like I'd read some, you know, fairly highbrow stuff, but it was always like um uh like uh, I'd always describe it as grumpy old man literature, like your your Kurt Vonnegut's and Joseph Heller. Mm-hmm. Um, ah. the, what? You know that that kind of thing, uh, which was my will, and it like it was worldviews aligned with all re- what I already sort of believed. Um, so it, it kind of, you know, it was dense, but it was easy for me to read because like it echoed a lot of just how I thought about the world. Now you're the dense one reading this. Um, no, I mean the the prose being dense, like it's not I not not dumb. It's um, just compact. Yeah, I know. Um, it's just a little joke. No, oh, okay. you're dense. Oh, maybe. Uh, anyway, so it's you know illuminating. But I've got a giant stack of other books to read, so I don't know if I want to get you know quagmired into. Um, Geeky. <laughs> no, not that quagmire. <laughs> um, in 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 this big long slog of a slog of a book. So I'm just contemplating it. Um, don't do it. The loud speaker spoke up and said, "Give up, <laughs> give up." <laughs> but the um, <laughs> I was uh, just Crystal reminded me the other day that uh, Game of Thrones is coming up. Mm-hmm. So it's something. When is that? Like April? Something like that. I can't. Ooh. It seemed sooner than I anticipated. But like, she was really excited. I think it was the trailer had dropped. Yeah, and I don't, I, I, no spoilers. Please. I haven't I haven't watched. Yeah, the, do not watch it. Spoilers abound. I am sure. I didn't watch the trailer, but like she had was getting really excited, and like normally, like you know me, like we're all excited. We watched Game of Thrones together, um, but it's been so long since last season. I'm kind of really cool on it. Yeah, surprisingly, me too. like I just I feel like winter has come, and it's just like I'm cool, man. And in this last season, like I thought the the quality of the writing and the show in general, despite being super entertaining, and I'm like, I just thought the show was less good, yeah, overall. So I mean, I'm I'm kind of expecting it to just, you know, not be like I think maybe that show that I I started loving is gone. Um, I think it's still there. I think it's just King of the Hill factor at this point. Maybe maybe that's what it is. Um, yeah. Uh, so, I got, a quick, I got a quick question before we move on. Okay. So, like, Plato's Allegory of the Cave, and you're reading that in English, and it's, like, not that hard to read, like, this, like, 1700 stuff. Like, how much do you think that's been adapted to, like, accommodate, like, mod- more modern English? Oh, it, it for sure has been. But, like, how much? Like, do you think it's, like like pretty changed or do you think it, it's uh it's still about the same it's just like um does it matter to have like the original you know try to maintain the original like archaicness or anything well i think the like i um i think with those um uh, texts from antiquity that every so often scholars will retranslate the original or as close to the original as they can get mm-hmm. to to uh bring the language in line with the true intention of the author. Mm-hmm. So I think that's always happening. So I think when you're reading Plato in a in a new uh, publication of that, you're reading something that has is more in line with modern language. Uh, whereas with Tristram Shandy, you know, as I, I think is why you bring this up, right? Yeah. Is that, yeah, Tristram Shandy is not updated. Although the probably, like I'm, maybe speaking out of my ass a bit, uh, I expect those like um, 18th century translations of Plato to be similarly obtuse if you try to read them today. Hmm. Uh, because, I mean, it's in antiquated English. Yeah, um, I guess I just, I was surprised I had to read Allegory of the Cave again the other day for school, and it just seemed like it was pretty smooth. It was just like, oh. Yeah, it sounds like something that, you know, could even be written now. Yeah. Um, also, I mean, but like I think about like Shakespeare is kind of hard to read, but not like in the way that that 
Tristram Shandy. And like Shakespeare's like from a couple hundred years before even, right? Yeah. I think Shakespeare just has um, like things move quicker in Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... It's for a play. Like the purpose was for more fast entertainment. um, And the thing is, is you can discern um, context more easily when you have characters talking to one another. Uh Uh, Where uh, Tristram Shandy, Shandy is written more like a like a fictional memoir mm. uh, where it's just somebody kind of like stream of consciousness. Oh. Uh, and it's hard to dis- establish context because he's not interacting with anybody. He's just like remembering things or thinking about, or like talking about stuff. Huh. And he will jump from topic to topic very quickly. Is and it a character or is it actually like memoir based? No, it's it's a character. Tristram Shandy is a character, and it's ri- written by uh, Lawrence Stern. But like Tristram Shandy is, um, he's he's a he's a comedic sort of character. Oh, uh, and his like lo- you know it's called Trist- the life and opinions of Tristram Shandy, gentleman. You know it's it's a comedic book. Oh, okay. Uh, but like the comedy is is uh, you know for a country known for dry comedy, this is this is the fucking goby. <laughs> this is this is the driest humor you've ever read and some things are like really funny when you think about him like the, the book starts off with him talking about his it's like okay let's start at the beginning of my story and he's talking about his parents fucking like you know mm-hmm. it's like this is where it starts you know and then he talks about him as a sperm and he was the most worn out sperm in the world when when he finally like got in the egg. It's like uh, he started life and he was already out of energy. It's like and then it all just went down from there. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, it's it, there's like funny imagery in there, uh, you know, especially for the time. And I guess from the forward is like quite controversial sort of, uh, you know, he was he was a controversial figure by how like crude he was. So was he British? Yeah. Oh, OK. Um, it was, it, it was an America then. Well, no, this is, it was before there was America. I mean, well, the, the, the continent was here, but it was before the, the United States of America was a, well, an but entity. Like, yeah, but I mean, there's still like people, a lot of people over here living. Well, there have been lots of people over here living for thousands of years. But, yeah, but I mean, closer related in, to like writing it in English. The you know? British colonies. Yeah, uh, yeah, there were British colonies at that time. Yeah, like obviously. this would this would be the funny book. So, that, he, he that wasn't over George here. Washington would read if you wanted to read a funny book. <laughs> Bring me the funny book. <laughs> um, but so, the, but this guy never. He wasn't from the American colonies. He was from Britain. No, he was British. Oh, okay, like straight up British, make British. But it was before the British accent existed. Yeah. So, yeah, I've not. Yeah, it's before that kind of that kind of stuff. Uh, all right. I did remember. <laughs> I also watched Norseman, but we don't need to talk. Oh, about I watched it. a couple episodes of that yeah. with you and Dad. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, season two though. It, like, okay, I got this to say. I know we've okay. talked a lot about this. Have we talked about Norseman on the channel? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Nor- Norseman is the British office if they were Vikings. Yeah. Um. But it kind of starts off as like kind of a parody of like shows like Vikings or other Viking shows yeah where it's like situational humor and but it's like those where there's actual gore but with situational humor by the end of season two I'm convinced that the writers were like should we just make an actual Viking show instead of this parody because it just ended up getting like less and less funny and more and more just dark <laughs> Yeah. And it became less good, I think. It became less unique. Because by the end, there was, like, still some humor, but it was just more about, like, Viking politics and betrayal. And they got, like, so into their, like, villain that it no longer seemed as good to me. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think... uh... I mean, the the show isn't British. It's uh, Icelandic or... Yeah, like, all the the actors are... um whatever norwegian or oh, scandinavian norwegian. i don't know uh, <laughs> i don't know with my the, knowledge is limited i just like you know making a, a guess um probably scandinavian is that something right? something i don't know northern european something uh that but that reminds me of um red dwarf is a show i really like and it started out as 
you know, just a sitcom, Mm -hmm. you know, low budget sitcom. Uh, But you could tell that at some point the writers thought that they had a good science fiction show on their hand. So it became an actiony science fiction show. And like for like a good past season three to season eight, you know, it was a this they thought they were making a good science fiction show (laughs) that had occasionally funny elements. And it's like. That's not that that's, doesn't work. That's exactly what happened here, but it happened way faster. It's like when it's like when the joke character started like actually scheming and like killing people. Season like four it, to season eight. Yeah. I mean it's like with Red Dwarf. Man, on on Norseman, it was like, come on, man. like what? Like this is like a total character shift almost. Like the person who was just the you know Yeah, I don't know. It it disappointed me. Oh, okay. Whew. Whew. Wipe that sweat off your brow because it's time for predictions. Okay. This is a segment that we're doing to close. Uh, It's predictions. It's a contest. Contest. So uh, because Jacob and I love video games so much and we're sort of kind of tuned into um, meta scores on either Metacritic or um, OpenCritic. Uh, So like a new video game comes out and like Jacob and I are like, Always check out the meta score. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, that seemed really high, really low, or most of the time I think we're on point. Yeah. Uh, but between for every month uh, with video game releases, we're going to predict the meta score by the time the our- next podcast rolls around. And we're going to be uploading podcasts on the last Sunday of every month. So for the next, yeah. So for this release, what's the first upcoming release? Should we outline the stakes first? Oh, yes. So. The stakes. You will have the loser will have to draw their own nobody and post it to the Carriageway Twitter account, which is at carriage underscore way, which can be found in the description below. Uh, And if you don't know what that means, that's that's some Kingdom Hearts nonsense. All Uh, right. So I don't know quite how we're going to do this yet. I, I think I'll read the game. I'll say the release date. And then Joe, let's see, you'll say, maybe we'll swap back and forth. You say the meta score, I say what I think the meta score will be. And then whoever will, is closest will get a point. Yes. And, and whoever has the most points will, will not have to draw themselves <laughs> as a crazy Kingdom Hearts thing. Yeah. All right. So the first game, Resident Evil 2 Remake, coming out January 25th. Joe, what will be the meta score? Uh, 94. This is hard. Resident Evil 4 has a really high meta score. Yes. Resident Evil 2 Remake will have a 91. 90. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, okay. All I, right. I say 94, you say 91. All right. So, Joe, you read the next game and then I'll go first. On the okay. Next game. Kingdom Hearts 3 finally comes out <laughs> January 29th. What do you think the meta score the is? The meta score will be... 88. Okay. I say 79. Ooh, brutal. <laughs> All right. The next game, Crackdown 3, coming out <laughs> February 15th. Uh, Metascore. <coughs> Excuse me. 75. Metascore 66. Holy shit. People are going to hate it. Terry oh. Crews, I'm sorry. Is, isn't going to save it? So you think it's going to be like the next um, a Sea of Thieves? Yeah. Don't okay. at me. Okay. All right. So let's see. Yeah, you do that. Uh, okay. And the release after that is Far Cry New Dawn coming out February 15th, so, which I believe is uh, Valentine's Day. No, February 14th is Valentine's Day. Oh, shows what I know. <laughs> Thanks for always is always has been, <laughs> and it also comes out this. It came out the same day as Crackdown Three. So Far Cry New Dawn takes place. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Whoa, easy, buddy. <laughs> Excuse me. Just uh, very excited about Far Cry New Dawn. <laughs> it takes place in Montana. Bah, bah. So the second game to take place in Montana, and the second Far Cry game to take place in Montana. <laughs> it's like a weird spin-off sequel to Far Cry Five. Doesn't really matter. It's gonna get a seventy-one on Metacritic. Okay, I think. Like um, eighty one. Oh, yeah. I think it's. I think it's just going to be good. It's going to be another Far Cry. People are going to forgive it. Everything. Metro Exodus 
coming out February 15th. Same day. Okay. The day after Valentine's Day. Okay. Those Metro games review fairly well. And this one, you know, has a lot of... Seems like the biggest one yet. Uh, uh, 85. 89. Okay. Uh, and the release after that is Anthem on February 22nd. And Anthem is the new uh, Bioware game. Mm-hmm. Except it's made in the it's a, like really like crappy... Um, what what would you call it? Like um, like it's one of those multiplayer games. It's oh, a, like, like a, a Destiny like. It's a Destiny like. You know, it's um, it's one of those kind of <laughs> fucking things. <laughs> Always online bull crap. <laughs> uh, Anthem's gonna get. Dang, that's a hard one. I think Anthem's gonna get like a. 87. Oof. That's, uh, I think, I think the worm has turned on that kind of game. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's a coincidence that Activision cut Destiny loose. Mm-hmm. I think, I think finally, thankfully, that shit is gone. <laughs> uh, or on the way out. I think Anthem is coming out and going to do, uh, 78. Okay. We will find out, and the loser will have to post a picture to the Carriageway Twitter of their nobody. Lots of zippers. All right, everybody. Thank you. That has been the Carriageway Podcast for January 2019. Thank you, Lucian. Uh, We hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, Be sure to subscribe if you listened all the way to this. You might as well. And if you already have, we thank you kindly. (laughs) What is it, the Bioshock thing? Would you kindly subscribe? Would I don't. Kindly... I don't think it was with a southern twang. Would you? Would you kindly subscribe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, me do. If Bioshock took place in the Appalachians. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Joe, any, you want to say goodbye and good night? Yeah, that's yeah. All right. See you. See you then. Bye.